It took a lot of counting, but he finally made it to the eighth floor. We only have seven more minutes. Any way you can do pickups faster? Your next pickup is on four. George sure wished he had a way to tell what floor he was on without having to start at one. Elevators had signs that told you what number came next, even if you were somewhere in the middle. <gasps> George could make a sign, too. <laughs> Certainly! Uh, I'm never gonna find a parking spot. Wow, thanks. Now, I just have to go to the ninth floor, which is a long, long way away. Using his numbered fingers, all George had to do was count down from floor eight to floor four. <laughs> Seven. Six. Five, four. At least he hoped it was four. His counting system worked. Ah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're here. Hey, your next pickup's on the tenth floor. No need to start at one. George's fingers told him exactly how to count from four to ten. George was on the tenth floor, but his delivery was practically on ten and a half. Take everything to the first floor quickly. Pepe El Loco will be here any second. <laughs> Nice nose. Hello, my name is Pepe. Oh, is that for me? Uh -huh. ah, my gadget. Oh, thank you. Now, to get to the ninth floor for my show. Right, the elevators are tricky. Huh? Hold this for me, will you? Huh? Can you believe how hard it is to find a parking spot at this joint? The elephants need a garage. Uh -huh. eh? What floor are we on? I was busy with my gadget and forgot to count. I was busy trying to figure out what your gadget was. I, I didn't count either. We'll have to start all over. Uh, I'll be late for my show. Ah! <laughs> oh, the seventh floor. That monkey is a genius. He certainly is. Introducing the world's greatest clown, Pepe El Loco, and his mystery gadget. Ah! Wow. <laughs> and it was all made possible by George, a monkey you can really count on. There's no way Bird could get past this brick wall. Uh -oh. 
except through there. There's Bird! Safe and sound. I hope that's not what I think it is. It is what I think it is. Steer Bird to us. Oh, an elephant might step on it. Oh, I'll go to the other side. When I get there, steer Bird left to those bars, and I'll grab her. Uh -huh. To go left, George had to push the joystick left. Ah. <coughs> the plane is going right. The joystick needs to go left. Ah. <coughs> Ooh, it is left. OK. Slowly let go of the joystick. Ah, ah. Oh, I can't watch. George, do something. Ah. If off was on, up was down, down was up, and left was right, Maybe right was left. Oh, my. George needed the plane to go up. George lands bird, but this time, so we can catch it, he slides the throttle to slow. Uh, the throttle is already on slow. Uh, I give up. Hmm. Luckily, monkeys never, ever quit. If off was on, up was down, down was up, left was right, and right was left, Maybe fast was slow. Yeah! <laughs> hmm. Any chance you can turn it off? If off was on, maybe on was off. Stellar work. Now to fix the remote. Oh, too late. The flock. Oh, I'll never be able to make the repairs in time. Oh. The lost blackbirds won't be able to join their friends again. But George knew the remote wasn't broken. Hmm. It was just backwards. <laughs> he could launch Bird if he did the opposite of what the book said. To start the engine, he hit off. Ah. I'm back. Uh, what is my monkey doing with your bird? Ah. <laughs> to go fast, he slid the slider to slow. Ah. He pushed the joystick down to go up. Ah. <laughs> Push the joystick right to turn left. And to turn on the autopilot and activate the computer, hmm. he hadn't tried that one before. But if the autopilot was like everything else, if you wanted to turn it on, you had to turn it off. Thank goodness we found you. Some wires got crossed on the remote and everything is backwards. We're receiving transmission. George, you're a genius. Ah. Hey, 
Any chance I can get you to help me land bird when the flock heads south for winter? <laughs> Monkeys love things that fly. <laughs> Especially if they're the ones who get to fly them. Sorry, Grandma, but Howie gets too hot exercising outside. Hogs do that sometimes, sweetie. If George couldn't bring Howie inside where it was cool, he'd have to bring the inside cool outside to Howie. Ah. All right, George. George needed to make his hog exerciser turn, even if it wasn't plugged in. Now, what made that fan turn? If George had a wheel, he could make his fan turn too. Where could he find a wheel? Now, instead of being powered by electricity, George's hog exerciser fan was powered by George. <laughs> and Howie could comfortably exercise for 30 minutes. Now all he needs to do is practice walking for the judges. Huh? <laughs> yep, it's step four. We better get started. Every day, Howie had the same routine. He exercised, had a bath, got brushed, practiced walking for the judge, and got an apple. Exercised, a bath, got brushed, practiced walking for the judge, and got an apple. <laughs> How he practiced so much, he knew it by heart. <laughs> Today's the day. Ready for the fair, Ulysses? George and Howie were ready, too. Oh! Howie had exercised, been bathed, and brushed. Now, he had to walk for the judges. And then he'd get his apple. Well, you're up next. Number 88. And the next contestant is number 88, Howie the Hall. George, where are you going with that? <laughs> Sorry, but you can't take that into the ring. It's against the rules. Huh? But that's how we always practiced. How can Howie win without it? Final call for Howie. Howie was worried. His friends didn't seem to know what to do. But Howie knew. It was always the same. He exercised, got bathed, got brushed. And now he was supposed to walk for the judges. And then he'd get his apple. Besides having a hard time keeping cool and liking apples, pigs are really, really smart. We have a winner!
George didn't know what deploy meant. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then he found out. <laughs> the rover drove away with George! No problem. Just use the remote control to bring it back. I, I can't find it. Oops, uh, I think I left it sitting on the rover. My mistake. <laughs> George was on an out of control Mars rover. He had to stop it. <laughs> that sure looked like a remote control. was the remote control. <laughs> now George was in full control, except for being lost on Mars. Maybe he could find his way using the book. There were the two moons of Mars. That wouldn't help him find his way back to the ship. But it sure was cool. He reached the Valles Marineris. It looked like the Grand Canyon, but much bigger than any canyon on Earth. He also found the Olympus Mons, the highest volcano in the solar system. had a pretty nice view, too. <gasps> He'd found the rocket. <coughs> now all he had to do was drive there. <coughs> the rover was stuck. He had to give it a good push to get it going again. That was his mission. <laughs> Einstein's broccoli spinach gum was gumming up the works. He wanted to get to the ship and tell the man with the yellow hat, except the rover wouldn't go. Luckily, he remembered he was three times as strong in Mars' low gravity. George, are you okay? You were sleeping so peacefully. Did that sound wake you up? I blew a bubble and it popped. <laughs> Then George realized why he was dreaming about gum. <laughs> ah, gum in the main rover control panel. Did you stick gum in there every time I told you to stop chewing? See, I, I, I thought that one was the trash. <laughs> Oops. George, how did you figure that out? <laughs> ah. Ah. All clean. It works. We're ready to launch. Seven seconds and counting. Three, two, one. Lift off. Ooh, ah. George, you saved the Einstein Pizza Space Program. Thank you so much. You know, sometimes I think the world would be better off if monkeys ran everything. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. 
It's then put in this giant sifter to remove husks or hulls, which are the parts of the grain we don't eat. <laughs> that is so cool. And then finally, it's put in bags and it's ready to be shipped to the warehouse. Ah, wow. Any questions? Yes. Could we have one bag of masa, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't have any masa. This is all flour. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Since there's been very little rain, the drought delayed the corn harvest. No corn, no masa. Where does your corn come from? We get ours from local farmers. Uh -huh. George knew a farmer who just might have some corn. Look at my new water tank, George. It stores rainwater for my crops. <laughs> what? What is it? George pointed the way to Rankin's farm. <laughs> this is wonderful! It's true, the drought delayed the harvest, but thanks to my water tank, we had just enough to get through. I've been harvesting all day. I'm almost afraid to ask, but you say you've been harvesting all day? Yes. So my question is, do you have corn now? Yes. You must really like corn. <laughs> Not only did Mr. Rankins have fresh corn, but he also had dried corn that could be ground into masa right away. Come on, boys. We must see that the corn gets through to Marco's abuela. The Tortilla Express is on the way. All right! Ah! Woohoo! So they took the corn to the mill, where it was ground into masa and put in bags. Come on, boys. <laughs> then they took the bags to the warehouse, where they were packaged for the stores. Ah, look at that. And to the store where they filled the shelves for customers. Here you go. Gracias. And finally, to Marco's house. <laughs> George was surprised. He always knew that Mr. Rankins grew corn, but he didn't realize that the food in the store and in people's homes came from farmers like his friend, Mr. Rankins. She's here! Until that day, George hadn't really thought about how important farmers were to so many people. Surprise! Ay, que bueno! Delicioso, mi amor! Marco's grandmother loved Marco's special tortillas. Mm. This is amazing. What a tortilla. But one person loved them most of all. I could eat a whole stack. Are there more? Oh. Ah! Nice. Ah. <laughs> 